Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the EC Extended 30 Day Forecast of the UK and the rest of Europe as well for today's second video. Um, so this is your detail 30 day slash 42 day uh, European outlook and I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was our 6am UK weather forecast. It's a 10 to 14 day coming up to you later on. And if all of that was enough, we will have the third update for the 2023 Glass Festival. And that will be released around 7 o'clock, I would have thought, this evening. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos. Thank you so very much, everybody, um, for doing that. And I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday as well. Right, let's start off. They're going to begin with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly, taking us from the 12th to the 19th of June this week. Basically, we'll see high pressure dominating in the North Atlantic and back into northern parts of Europe as well. Large area of high pressure in Scandinavia, low pressure from the Atlantic into Western and also some parts of Europe. Are winds coming in from an easterly. Uh, direction for northern parts of Europe. The uh, 500 millibar height and only from the Arctic, the North Pole view down has an area of above average heights sitting in the North Atlantic and across northern parts of Europe with a trough of below average heights across central, southern and eastern parts of Europe and also out in the Atlantic as well. So you can see where the dry weather is going to be in the north, you can see where the unsettled weather will be further south. Right, so here's our temperature anomaly for this week. Hot in the north and the west. You can see quite clearly have got a northwest southeast divide actually uh, across Europe. So anywhere from like Germany, Poland, eastwards, looking really quite cool, particularly including Italy into the Balkans, into the Black Sea, and going northwards as well, heading up towards Ukraine into the far southwest of Russia, below average temperatures through there. Further north and west, though, it looks really quite warm, especially through Scandinavia, hot, hot, hot there in the deep red colours. That's like 10 degrees or more um, above average, and also into northern parts of uh, the UK as well. Deep red colours. On offer on the temperature scale, wow, wow, wow. Um, elsewhere, widespread temperatures of like 3 to 6 degrees or more above average um so we've got sort of france below countries into uh western germany ireland i say scotland particularly focused some very hot weather and also norway and sweden too the baltic sea states latvia estonia this rainy looking uh very warm as well as does finland belarus smart to be divided i believe with uh, hot weather in the north of belarus and uh, cooler weather further southwards into the Mediterranean, yet again we see a proper east-west split there uh, this week. So eastern parts of the Med, Italy, and uh, to Greece and Turkey, cooling average temperature on its feet there. Corsica and Sardinia also standing out, being a little bit on the cool side. As does Malta, we come further westwards though, gets a little bit warmer. Although inland parts of Spain actually slightly cooler than average. And precipitation-wise, again, we reflect that uh, northwest southeast divide um, in the precipitation, really. So much of southern and particularly southeast Europe looking quite wet, especially, again, from the Balkans to the Black Sea, very wet conditions through there, and into Italy, and through the central bowl of Med, even into parts of Spain, Portugal, and southern France, along the Côte d'Azur, for example, looks quite wet through there, the far south of Spain and Portugal, a little bit drier, North Africa possibly starting to dry out a little bit as well, but the properly dry weather is further northwards, where again, we see that area of high pressure bringing uh, pretty much a universally dry week, actually, to much of northern and also western Europe. Ireland just turning a little bit more unsettled from uh, thunderstorms this week. But most of the UK, France, below countries, bound upon Netherlands, Germany, northwards to Denmark, and then into the Scandinavia Peninsula before you go over the Baltic Sea states. Many areas are coming out drier than average under that large Scandinavian high. Right, week two will be the 19th to the 26th of June. It's a little bit more unsettled um, next week with lower pressure out in the Atlantic, beginning to affect some western parts of Europe, a ridge of high pressure 
is beginning to drift over more towards the southeastern uh, part of Europe, and we've also got high pressure still there to the north, particularly um, in the Norwegian Sea between Greenland and uh, Norway. But the high pressure just retreating that a little bit further north, was I think, allowing some low pressure into Western Europe from the Atlantic. 500 millibar heights shows that uh, area of low pressure in the Atlantic. Just getting a little bit closer to western parts of Europe, but northern uh, Europe dominated by high pressure. This ridge extending down through central regions as well. So how's the temperature anomaly looking next week? Still very warm across much of northern and also western Europe. No change with that really. So uh, another very warm and or hot week for most of Scandinavia, the Baltic Sea states, Poland, Germany, uh, the Low Countries, France, Ireland, the UK, both temperature anomalies are in those deep red colours, which is like three to six degrees above average. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Meanwhile, across the eastern parts of Europe, mainly the South East Europe, it is quite a bit cooler through there. Uh, again, uh, we see that uh, particularly Greece and Turkey coming out quite cool. Northwards to the Black Sea as well. The Balkans not quite as cool there, I don't think. We need to lift up a little bit of the temperature anomaly. Actually, the central bowl of the Med looking uh, warmer through uh, the central bowl of the Med. But Spain, Portugal, not much to get excited about temperatures there, nor Italy. How precipitation looking uh, next week. So it does look more unsettled for western parts of Europe. We've got the Low Countries, France, into west of Germany, also for the UK and for Ireland, coming out with above average rainfall. A lot of that might be down to thunderstorms, I think, given how warm the temperature anomaly is. I mean, over in the far eastern side of Europe, particularly focusing around the Black Sea, um, through here, we find that uh, it's also a little bit wetter than average. Conversely, though, it's very dry across the far north of Europe. And also the central bowl of the Med is looking reasonably dry as well. So um, that's a bit of a freeway split going on through the Med. So uh, Spain, Portugal, I mean, some areas, especially quite unusual for this time of year. Eastern parts of Spain are coming out wetter than average. We've got Greece and Turkey on the far eastern side of Europe also looking wetter than average. We're in the middle, especially around Italy, Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, uh, it looks drier than uh, average through there. Week three will be the 26th of June to the 3rd of July. How's this week looking? So, um, lower pressure into northern Europe now. That's a little change on what we've seen from the EC extending for a little while, I think. Um, higher pressure may be through the central part of the Med, possibly drifting more towards the eastern side of the Med. What about the 500 millibar heights? Um, well, they're showing an area of above average heights, like through the western part of Europe. So I'm not sure how the mean set of pressure of 500 millibar heights um, compare with one another. To be honest, there must be some lower pressure through here and a bit of an influence from the jet stream. Um, I would have thought. Anyway, the temperature at Dublin for week three is generally looking above average in most parts of Europe. Still a bit on the cool average side in the very, very far east. Again, we're talking about the Black Sea and uh, areas sort of east of that. Elsewhere, it's generally warmer than normal, especially again through many central, northern, and also western parts of Europe. Quite deep red colours there through France, Spain, Portugal. Again, it's like three six degrees above average and precipitation wise. So it's a bit wetter than average in the northwestern corner. Um, driving average down towards Spain, Portugal. Bit of a change, perhaps. Um, and then a weakening signal elsewhere, as always. The further out we go, the weakening signal gets, particularly for precipitation. Week four will be the 3rd to the 10th of July. Uh, so this one starts to bring some lower pressure. Just generally across Europe, actually, but it is quite a weak signal, though. 500 millibar heights have an area of above average heights, centred right over the top of the UK and Ireland. Being seen our pressure and 500 millibar heights are not really tallying up with one another, I have to say, from week three onwards. Most parts of Europe in uh, week four are looking quite warm as well, especially central and west areas, a little bit cooler over into the east. And what about precipitation? Looks a little bit unsettled, doesn't it? Especially so 
for like Southern Europe again, very unusual for like we're into July now, very unusual for July to see wet and average conditions through the central bowl of the Med, for example. There, there's our holiday islands, um, you know, the Balearics, Mallorca, Menorca, right? Beefer with above average rainfall, Corsica, Sardinia with above average rainfall. We've got the Cote d'Azur in the south of France with above average rainfall. And the costas into uh, eastern um, and southern parts of, uh, of Spain, um, also West Average. I mean, this is very unusual for, uh, for for like high summer now. We're into July, remember, so really quite unusual uh, what we're seeing there. Okay, that's your five today. Okay, done. Let's just go through weeks five or six data uh, before we go. So this is week five, 10th to 17th of July. High pressure returning to uh, northern parts of Europe. Then that should bring warmer, hotter, drier weather into the north and west of Europe as well. It brings back into the east, what about the 500 millibar height anomaly, the ridge extending, expanding out um, there. So that obviously will bring hotter, drier weather with it. The temperature anomaly above average most parts of Europe in week five and uh, precipitation wise, looks like it's drying, drying trend across the northwest of Europe. Still looks very wet though across many southern parts of Europe. And last week, six will be 17th to 24th of July. Now, again, quite a lot of high pressure into uh, much of northern Europe. Also got higher pressure across southern and also eastern parts of Europe as well. Bit of a high pressure fest. 500 millibar heights, again, showing high pressure well and truly in control and in the ascendancy. Temperature anomaly. Largely above average, and um, the precipitation anomaly looks relatively dry in the north of Europe, but uh, across more southern areas. Right, that's it then for this week's birthday look. And remember, it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing. Could look completely different when we look at this again um, for the European outlook next Tuesday. And of course, we will have another look at this model just with an Ireland and UK focus on Saturday morning. But that's how it looks today. We're going to be back a little bit later on. We're going to 14 day, including all our great features. Come back for that later for this week's EC 30 day. Look at that's all for now. And thanks for watching.